Hi everybody and welcome back to the painting channel. Today it's going to be a little watercolour. It's all about the end of the day on the Romney Marshes. So let's dive straight in and let's see what happens. <laughs> Welcome back everybody. Before we get into the video, I just wanted to say a big, big thank you to two people. Uh, that is my son Barnaby James and his good friend Ben. Uh, both of them are young budding filmmakers and photographers and they are really keen and really good at what they do. And the other week they decided to help me out by doing a lot of film footage of me around the Romney Marshes, doing all sorts of crazy things, walking up this, across that, and painting all at the same time. And at the end of it, they, they cobbled together this wonderful little introduction that you're seeing on the start of my videos now. So I just wanted to say thank you very much, guys, for a fantastic job great experience and um, yeah I can't recommend it enough so if anybody out there wants to do uh, some professional footage to their videos or to their YouTube or for whatever even their own uh, website and portfolio uh, give them a call I'll put all their details in the section of the comment section below take a look at it and uh, I can't recommend enough. Anyway, thanks guys for what you did. It was fantastic and I really, really appreciate the effort. With that all said, let's now get on with the video. I do apologize. I just want to say a big thank you to the guys for the help. Enjoy the video, enjoy the painting. Catch you all soon, bye-bye. Hi everybody and welcome back to the painting channel. This is just gonna be a quick little study, I hope. And it's a very simple evening sky uh, quite honestly, of the Romney Marsh. Very, very simple form, very low horizon line. Okay, and the color's gonna be quite muted. There's a, an old barn or something onto one side. I'm gonna put that in somewhere like that. It's actually a double barn. I know where this is. It's a place called Burmarsh, or out the back of Burmarsh from where I live, very close to my home. And there we go. So we've got this nice little double apex barn little shape up through there. I'm not doing that too well. Just take that back off a minute. And let's draw that in again. So as I said, we've got a double apex bar. So let's just put the apexes in first. That would be easiest. Run those through to the back end and down and run this one through like so. And down and down. So we've got our barn, like, like that. Then there's a row of hills. Uh, they are very distant. They're going away, the downs, so they're coming really low to the horizon line. And they actually sort of disappear almost. You can just see a little faint glow of them in the real recesses of the background. And we've got a nice road, so I'm going to try and put that in. We've got a bank which is the top end of the field. And then we've got a road that comes around at a acute angle there, but then it sort of straightens up on the bend, something of that nature like that. A bank here, so you don't see the rest of this road and it comes around like so. So we've got a nice perspective disappearing into the distance. And we've got a sort of a bank here and that goes on through like that. And we've got a bit of a ditch so a lot of the Romney Marsh roads are sort of flanked each side by a drainage ditch now these I understand were dug out by the monks uh, a thousand plus or even further back than that so we're going to suggest that in there there's a bit of a ditch you can see some lighter reeds on this side of this field and then one or two structures here couple of distance trees up here giving a little bit of height and a bit of form I put those in quite large spreads a couple of smaller ones between the hills in the distance and the edge of the barn like so now the characteristically on the Romney Marsh is we do have these old uh, surface mounted 
telegraph poles which carry our, few, uh, our cables for electricity and they are very similarly shaped to this all the way through and then they just carry on down uh, one there and one sort of there and again it's given us a beautiful perspective to work with as we paint this picture like that and indeed there are some faint ones way off over here in the distance behind the barn they're obviously carrying wires down this way and then down another road which runs I know down through there um, and I'm not going to do too much more because the sky is going to really speak for itself I just wanted to put this part of the drawing in so to that end let's crack on now for this painting I'm using pretty much a pure indigo blue and I've got a very heavy weight rough paper so there's my indigo going in and as it comes down it will become a little more fluid but I want to drop in some other colors so I'm going to get those prepared so I'm going to put in some lovely uh, vermilion and I'm going to mix that up and I'm going to have another puddle of that on this side uh, of the painting so you can't see that in the shot I'm afraid but I got two pots of vermilion but I put some orange into one of those colors now I'm going to bring this down I'm going to start suggesting the lovely warmth that this sky is taken on at the end of the day there's this little spread of blue through the middle and I'm going to keep that going on I'm going to add some weight to this now as this comes down allowing that to bleed into my reds and my pinks and my oranges and settle on as it comes down through to this point here and then I want to add more of the reds coming in like so it's the way the cloud is moving uh, through the picture plane and it's getting richer as it comes down in here now I've got to be careful because what's happening is that the blue is going to affect the uh, colors of the red so I'm going to come in with some more orange and some more vermilion very very neatly and just bring that in like so and now I'm going to actually use a little bit of cadmium red in there too cadmium red I'm always a little bit careful of because cadmium red is quite a um, opaque it's an opaque color so you do need to be aware of that and I'm going to bring that all the way down to just the tops of the hills coming through the trees but that red will come through the tops and miss the barn well nearly miss the barn and just so I can protect the color that I need later for the hills because I, they will otherwise be affected by the reds all right now while I've got this stamp I'm going to come in here and add to the brilliance of that with some uh, Indian yellow and some red just clean off the yellow it's got a little bit affected dirty and just come in here with some Indian yellow into my reds make a much more punchy red color into the sky through here while we still can Now that's looking a bit too uniform so I'm going to come back in and punch some of that blue in because I've got a white mark I want to lose that and I've got to be careful here that I don't overdo this because it will mess up my look. Let's run that through once more. Now this actually could have been avoided if I'm honest with you but it's not totally unsightly so we can get away with that and I have then got to let it dry up on me I really wanted that nice rich warm evening color and let that dry back and it will dry very very pale in terms of the strength it looks very strong now 
but once that's dried back then it will be a lot easier to control. Now there are some bands in here uh, the way the cloud went so I'm going to utilize that. Just want to brush out a little bit of them just here and let that come down and settle into the wetter areas down through here but then I would like it to dry quite pale. So I'm going to leave that to dry off now and we'll come back and we'll carry on when this is ready to carry on with. Okay so it's fairly dry but we're not going to go straight back in on that. I'm going to actually do the foreground next. So let's crack on with that and let's have a look and see what it's going to be fairly dark, fairly muted. Don't forget this is the end of the day so we do want to make sure that we don't have the colours too strong at this point. So all of our colours are quite muted. Now I'm going to put in a little bit of lemon into our greens or into our indigo. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to avoid the area here. Just want to come in with this light green here. Now it's not strong enough. So let's come in with more indigo and more of the um, lemon and just give that a real dark accent here which is our grass as it were running all the way through this field here around this ditch into a little bit of detail through there I'm not worried about leaving bits of white uh, that's not a problem and I want to come down here with this side of the road like so and then just suggest one or two breaks of color and for that I'm going to go in and use some um, raw sienna mixes just to put one or two other values of color into this part of the field through here and you can see already that we're starting to lose the daylight in favor of some of this sort of more um, sort of twilight colors I suppose when the colors become a little more saturated because of the lack of light but at the same time um, you know they they haven't lost any of their beauty there's sort of that halfway stage of dark to light uh, intense and I guess that's because there is no more sun for the day as such right let's carry on and put one or two other darks into the foreground here just to mess up some of the green field and for that I used a bit of transparent orange, a bit of cobalt blue into the mixes. Give me a bit of a dirty grey muddy mix but I'm not going over the whole field, just some of it. And then I want to come in with something, let me see, maybe uh, let's try out one of the Spookvik uh, greys and let's just see what that's like for our road. It may be okay, it's going to bleed and blend a little bit but I want it to be quite pale as it dries up. So I'm going to put it in. I'm going to add a little bit of cobalt to it, not too much. Just a little tap of cobalt blue into there because it's a little bit monochromatic, but I want to take off the excess of color and let that dry up. So I'm going to come back in with the brush and take some of the pigment off ahead of time so I can see where the road is going then if I wish to come back in and add to the greens just to strengthen the definition between the two I can do that but we can see our road and it's not a problem now I've got to start concentrating on the hills in the distance they are quite a, bit, a lot of cerulean going into that I'm going to clean my palette but there's quite a bit of cerulean blue. It's actually quite unbelievable that there's quite a cerulean color. It's very, very pale. So I'm going to add a little bit of cobalt violet to that. And it's going to run that color all the way through the back there, which is our nice value for the hills, all the way off through the back like so. Now, hopefully I've got that right. I went a little bit too high with that, unfortunately. I wonder if I can tap that out. Before it sets up. Could mess it up, probably best to leave it and just let that dry off and do what it wants to do. Over here I'm not happy with that but actually when I look at the reference there is a quite a distant shrub so I'm going to come in with some darker indigo colors and just suggest a shrub 
tree type thing way off in the distance there which helps that little bit of uh, mess up that I did with the hill just to do what I want it to do and that'll be fine there we go I'm quite happy with the way that went it could have been a lot worse there could have been no tree or bush there at all while I've got this color I'm just coming very dry brush with our a couple of deeper darker trees much closer to us and a dry brush will help you on this rough paper get some great textures at the edge of each of the trees like so and they then run on there's another one small one there we'll put that in and another one there and that then goes towards the two barns and I think that's all we need to do the little run of color that runs through here not a problem we can run into there and just run it around the edge and that just gives us a nice grounding for the um, pigment and the trees to sit on in the distance and there is actually what I do need to pay attention to and that is uh, come in with some more of that indigo color but I'm going to add a little bit of transparent orange to that this time and just change the green a little bit because we've got a big much darker bush that comes down the side of this road in the top end of the ditch and suggest that there's a lot more going on here as it comes towards us like so I think that works quite nicely like that and I'm just wondering if I can just suggest that there are some grasses by changing some of those greens making them I think I want to take that one up a little higher because it's competing with the um, horizon line and I don't really want that so I'm going to patch tap in a little bit more green or oranges into that area as it comes on and then comes down like so that works quite nicely actually and there's one the other side so let's just do that one here uh, at the side of this road as it's going on and around and it does give rise to the direction of the road that works nicely as well I quite like that and maybe just one or two little bits and pieces that off into the edge of this field now there actually isn't any of that in this reference but I feel that it just helps the painting to have this sort of thicket or sort of uh, copsy hedges and use the negative space to suggest that there are grasses growing into it like so just breaks it up a little bit there is still a direction of light just enough you can still see a little bit of darkness around the edge of the road itself between that and the grass so I'm going to suggest that in like a verge coming down it will get thicker as it gets towards us and very similarly like that now if you think the edge is too hard just tap it away with a damp brush not too much water or hardly any water like so and just break it off so it becomes less of an edge and more of a blend okay so we're pretty much there in the foreground that's pretty much done what I've got to concentrate now is this area here and let's just look at the color of these buildings they're quite a violety blue so I am going to go in very quickly with some ultramarine violet a little touch of indigo into that I'm using between the two and I'm just going to suggest a pale it's a little bit too much um, pigment so let's come in much paler like so bring it all the way through the roof and down into the front of these two buildings like so all right and I've missed a little bit of the hill out in the background so I'm just going to run that through there and that's a bit too strong I just take it off a little bit and now I actually missed a bit there as well so what I'm going to do there is I'm going to allow myself to put in um, and use my artistic license which often comes in handy 
and and I'm going to put in a little bit of a, another tree to help me frame up that bit of the um, building. And I'll let that settle down, but I will come back into that and just finish that off. It's a little bit too wet there, so I've got to come back in. So while that is settling off and drying, let me just look at this area here. And we want to look at our clouds because we've got the base cloud in, but we need to come in with a second go. Now to that end, we're going to use some more indigo. But at this time, I'm going to put a touch of magenta to that. Not much, just a little bit. And let that run quite dry brush through here. Now that is a little bit on the um, deep side. So I'm going to come in with a bit more water and a little bit of cobalt blue and suggest and break that up a little bit like that. These are clouds that are drifting through the foreground up into the whole picture and give me a second line of clouds all the way through here and a big strong line. And that was what made me take the photographs because we had this beautiful sunset but these wonderful cloud forms that were just literally moving through the whole scene. Just going to add to them. I don't want to overdo them, but I want to get them looking about right. And it does not matter one iota if they are exactly the same shape as your ones are on your picture. That doesn't matter at all. Just as long as they do look like clouds and they do in a sense create the essence of what you saw that's what you want i'm using and scratching around with some dry brush to break up the edges and make these clouds look a little more natural as it were like so and there are some paler ones underneath we're going to come into those just want to put a little bit more uh, deeper blue into that now there was a part of the cloud was lifting out of it. I, I haven't done that and I'm not going to do that. It's quite a weird, you can just see it a little bit through there and I'm not going to try and replicate it too much because it was, a, I don't know, I can't actually, it was like a very funny light phenomenon that was going on at the time. I don't want to do too much more to it than that. I just want to make something more of these clouds that are drifting through. So with the last of my color on this subject, I'm gonna come in with a bit more magenta and a bit more of the blue, bit of cobalt into that too. Tap off the excess and just play around with some of these shapes very, very quickly. While this paint's dry, so if there is any changes, they will blend together like that. And there was a little touch up in here of another one that was coming through here. I'm just going to suggest a little bit of that, not as broad or as big as the actual reference shows it, just as though it's moving through the whole of the scene like that and sort of coming in from this way. Quite like the way that works and it starts to come on and almost join up with this one below it. So we're going to do that too. Leave that like that. All right. So now then much paler mix, a little bit more magenta coming in as we bring some of these colors through and much lower, but I want to dry brush it across. I want it to be quite subtle. And although the reference shows deep cloud through here, I don't want to do that. I like the idea of the orange mixing all the way down to the horizon line and these new clouds that are forming up are in little diminishing strips, both becoming redder, paler, pinker, as they go down towards the horizon line. They're not as strong, not as strong as that for sure. So take some damp water, damp water, some water on a damp brush and take that back a little bit, make it come all the way through the trees, if that's where it is, and beyond into the buildings like so. And this is where the buildings are going to work nice because if we can get this dark enough through here without upsetting the um, balance of the whole painting and keeping the strength of the cloud up in here but not all the way down here but keeping it dark enough 
like this then I think we can get away with making the uh, buildings just stand out a little better. I'm going to try that. Just a little dampness taking that down to that point there. All right. I'm quite happy with the way that is at the moment. There's always something else that you feel that you can do further on, but I think we'll leave that as is because it does what it says. They've got the cloud running through. There's not too much variance. There's just a little bit in there and a little bit of reds coming through from the background on these. And I'm quite happy with the way that looks. Now I'm going to just go to a smaller brush and my longer brush, my little rigger type brush, and I'm going to put in a bit on this building in a minute, but not quite yet. I'm getting ready for it. I'm putting some stronger indigo with a little bit of lemon to that, making this green color that I like. And I'm just going to look at the end of the building and I'm just going to try and paint really the edge and suggest the end which is in shade. I don't want to lose the shape too much. And I mean, a big danger of doing that because there's dampness there and I'm just going to nip that down with a bit of paper just to take the dryness, put the dryness back in as it were. Just take that off of there and leave that alone because that's just going to bleed on me and cause me a problem. So coming back over to this way, I'm going to put in some red into my indigo, making a dirty, deep but warm violet. And I'm going to come straight in with this and I'm going to just draw in my telegraph pole. Keep it as straight as you can, of course. And we've got a helicopter going over, I do apologize. And there you go, there's one telegraph pole. Just strengthen up the top of it. There we go. Now that's bleeding through there, so I'm going to take that out dry that off and come back into that in a minute. So I think I'm probably wise and not rushing. And let's just see where this needs to go further on. All right, so I'll come back to you very, very shortly and we'll just finish this off. Okay, we're into the last bit and I'm just going to tidy up one or two bits and put one or two other areas that need just clarification and finishing off. I wanted to put in a little darker on this and sort that out it got a little bit wavered on me so i'm just going to put a definite bit more dark in there on there and i'm going to put in this one which is like so and just a little cross piece another one down there and another little cross and then i think there was one here somewhere i'm going to put that in and one out through the back here like that and just leave it at that because i'm not going to try and put the wires in there's no need and now I just want to darken off with a medium brush, medium round brush. I'm just going to come in pretty dark, but a lot of blue, a bit of violet, a bit of dirty, dark, dark colours. And I'm just going to put in the side of this barn. Quite a dark roof, so it sets itself up nicely against the sky behind like that and I'm going to put in the area there and there because this is the end of the building and a dark roof on there like that just reshaping it where it got a little lost and that will work like so there you go just going to rise it up a little bit further Right, I'm quite happy with that, but I want to try and lift out just a little bit of pigment in the front of the building. Just a damp brush, just lift out a very tiny little bit in here. It is shade, but it's not actually black or very dark. I want to try and preserve some of that if I can. And let that look like so. I think that works. Just get away with that. And then just a little bit more blue into the side just run that into there like so I'm going to leave a little bit of light between that and the roof and just leave it at that I think that's fine and we'll leave that just as it is 
Now I'm going to come in with a bit of lemon into my indigo and I want to put a bit of dark through here. Dry brush. And I feel that the whole of this area could do with darkening up a little bit more than I had it. So I'm going to come in with some other colours and just play around with some of this field and just literally play around and give you the suggestion that there's a bit more contour, a little bit more interest out there. But it's also darkening off the scene. I don't want it getting it too dark towards these um, bushes, but I still want to have some sort of dark going on in here as it comes down to the foreground. And maybe a little higher here as it's in the distance and may even be just put a little shrub or bush in the dark in the background. Right, so I'm going to leave this side quite like that. Just soften some of this off. Soften this off. And let it flow just a little bit more. I'm just going to put in a little bit of more dark matter down here just to give weight to these bushes and to lose the base of that uh, telegraph pole a little bit and just one or two coming down onto there like so. And I think we're done. I think that's it. It's a, just a simple little painting just to show you one or two techniques. It's nothing special. Um, it just, I hope, is a little uh, way of um, you passing the time with a little bit of paper and just playing around with some of these marks and to see the way that some of these colours work with each other and just trying to keep an idea of the dusk, low light. That's really what I was interested in. And I think to that end we've uh, we've accomplished that. So I'm going to stop the video in a minute. I'm just going to take this off as the big reveal. I do like to do this part. And let's just see how the painting has done. Run it along the bottom here. I always love to see these um, white edges to a painting. I don't know why, it's just the way things are for me. I just like that and uh, don't always get away with it. Sometimes it bleeds, but since my friends told me to put those little shapes across the edge of the uh, paper, there you go. I hope you enjoyed that and I'll catch you all in the next video. Um, this may come out in between my Friday slot, but don't forget every Friday you'll get a new video anyway. And sometimes you're going to get a little bonus one on top, which this may well be one of those. All the best for now. Happy painting. Have a go at this one and I'll catch you all very, very soon. Bye bye for now. Bye.